Salutations tubers and welcome back to the layout for the next episode in my History of OGH series. This time around we shall be covering the modern era which goes from approximately the late 1980s all the way up to the present day. Basically when Richard Kuhn acquired Lionel from MPC and then transitioned over to being Lionel LLC and uh, of course, in this video, I hope to cover a few of the other manufacturers that came and in many cases went during the modern era. We'll do a quick little pan around. And as you can hopefully see, this time around things are looking a little bit different from the MPC era. There was a big push in this particular era to make trains which were even more realistic looking. In fact, so realistic looking they really started blurring the line between what makes a semi-scale or toy train and a model train. It's a kettle of fish we won't get into in this video, but suffice it to say it gets to the point where you have to set one next to the other to tell which is which. And one of my favorite uh, products of this particular era would be the Lionel Jr. line, which is represented by this, which is the Mikado Jr. And in my opinion, this was about the pinnacle of O gauge model train making in this particular era. I don't think they got much better. In my own personal opinion, I think things have actually started getting worse, but another kettle of fish. Uh, the Jr. line, in case those of you might not be familiar, it was a line of three different locomotives that Lionel made in the late 90s, early 2000s. It consisted of the Hudson Jr., which I shall be pulling up into frame right about now. Here we go. Not quite a 700E, but certainly does the job. I definitely like this one. And we've got the Mikado Jr., which is represented by a Texas and Pacific 810. Because I'm a Missouri Pacific nut, and the TNP was one of the railroads the uh, Missouri Pacific bought. It's about the closest thing I've found in semi scale to a Missouri Pacific steam engine. Then we have the Berkshire Jr., represented by the Erie Burke, hiding behind our MTH 49er and our FEF 3. And, uh,. This particular engine might look a little bit more familiar to you as the Polar Express because this is actually the model that Lionel based their Polar Express trains off of. Basically reuse the tooling. Now there's a lot of people who fuss about toolings get reused, but to me I always think it's going to save you money in the end because they don't have to reinvent the wheel. But in one shape or another, the Mikado Jr. and the Burke Jr. are still being made today as Lion Chief engines, but we'll cover Lion Chief a little bit later in the video. And since they're sitting here out in front, I think it's worth mentioning MTH, which as of this recording is going to be uh, what we call a fallen flag or a company that's going to be non-existent anymore. In truth, it's kind of up in the air as of this uh, video. Most of their assets have been sold off to other companies. But I'm kind of hoping that the Rail King line, which is basically their semi-scale line, which is what these two engines are, gets to continue in some form or another. But among the manufacturers of semi-scale in the modern era, MTH happens to be one of my favorites because of their uh, proto sound system, all the smoke and so on. Kind of sorry to see them go. And we'll take the camera here and we'll pan over to these two engines. This little A5 switcher and this little diesel switcher. I'm not sure if that's an SW9 or maybe an SW1200. Somebody could maybe put that in the comments, and I'd greatly be appreciative. They're made by a company called K-Line, which was another big name in the early days of the modern era. They basically got their start making uh, reissues of Lionel post-war pieces, 
then they started branching out and doing other things. Got to be where they were in one really big tussle with Lionel. They used to snipe each other in their ads all the time. And it eventually boiled down into legal troubles, because on the one hand, K-Line was actually selling their trains at a loss, and they were using Lionel technology. Not necessarily without Lionel's knowing or say-so, so they got into a big legal tussle. And to make a long story short, Lionel snapped them up, and they basically cut most of the competing products and continued limping the product line along for a few more years until that was all she wrote. Another manufacturer that fortunately is still with us would be Williams, who made this little engine. It's presently owned by Bachman now, but it used to be a separate company. In fact, that's where uh, Mike Wolf from MTH got his start. He started working for Williams. This engine is featured in another one of the videos here on the layout. And as I've mentioned there, hasn't quite got as many features as some of the other modern era engines I have, but I like it because it's got an old school charm to it. I like the old-fashioned smoke unit. and In fact, it's got a very basic whistle and a bell. Another highlight would be this, the Lionel Docksider. This would be one of my best-in-show recommendations for the modern era. You can pick these up fairly affordably, and if you've got a little layout like I do, it makes a pretty good locomotive to have. It's powerful and can swing around these curves. Another visitor from another video is the Lion Chief Steam and Flyer Freight Set Engine, which I have, little 080. Kind of segues neatly into the innovation side of the video. I always like to make a mention of whatever technical innovations came along in a particular era. So if you give me a second to fix the camera. Back up, oh, there it goes. So for this particular era, the main big innovation besides improved toolings and paint would be electronics. This was an era when the old mechanical E unit was pretty well put out to pasture, though it kind of made a bit of a comeback in recent years. For a electronic board to control the reversing function, it really started in the MPC era, but the modern era kind of brought it to a head. And it wasn't just reverse. Now we've got sounds, we've got chuffing, we've got fan-driven smoke units. Basically all the bells and whistles you would look for in a modern locomotive. On the one hand, I really like these because it makes the models that much more real. But on the other hand, there is something to be said for the old-fashioned puffer type and just listening to the wheels roll on the track. Purely a personal opinion. Another big name I like to bring up would be Menards. They've kind of been the dark horse of the modern era coming out with affordable rolling stock like this. I did a little piece on Menards if you'd care to watch, but the thing I'm really excited about Menards going into the modern era is the F3 they made recently. I really honestly hope that they will make that a full production run because at the price they were selling it, which was about 140 bucks, you really can't beat it. There is no locomotive new that I know of that you can acquire for that kind of money. But uh, anyway, back to the technology. Another big innovation that came out in this era would be the, the Lion Chief system. Everybody's probably familiar with one of these, but basically made model trains accessible to everybody. I personally rather like the system. It kind of gives you a light command control system without having to buy in all the technology, the control bases and so on. But on the one hand, I kind of mourn the fact that the transformer train set has kind of been outmoded. I kind of wish they'd bring it back. If for no other reason, it would probably make the train sets a bit cheaper. But, que sera, sera, my friends. So... I guess, in conclusion, before we start running a couple of these and showing you what the modern era has to offer. 
next time around I shall be doing a appendix to this series where I cover clockwork and I'd also like to do a I guess an opinion piece a speculation piece on what's going to come next for O Gage so I hope you all get to stick around for that and if you've stayed this far into the video I thank you for watching please comment subscribe all that good stuff so until next time folks see ya